Now to our interview portion, we are talking about entrepreneurship and this afternoon we are joined by none other than Balkis Chipkwani, the CEO of Fleets Simplify, which is a company that utilizes a technology to manage fleets of vehicles on behalf of individuals and organization. Thank you so much, Balkis, for joining us this afternoon and welcome. Thank you for having me. Maybe we can start on that note where this is among the sectors where they're deemed to be male dominated. How did you navigate through this Marky Waters and now you're a chief executive officer? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. So maybe to just shed light on what Fleet Simplify does ahead of answering that question. Okay. So Fleet Simplify is a platform that monetizes vehicles, uh, starting with the ride hailing market. So what we do, we connect gig drivers with vehicles mm -hmm. they can drive and earn, earn a decent income. But okay. on the other hand, we enable the vehicle owners to make an extra income out of their vehicles hassle free. Okay. So we're building a marketplace where you as a vehicle owner, you're able to earn uh, good sustainable revenues from your car. Mm -hmm. And the drivers are also able to, you know, drive on these platforms and earn. And we create employment for them through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of the male dominated sector, mm -hmm. um, clearly when I joined this business, I, that wasn't at the back of my mind. Okay. And probably that was one of the factors that helped me, you know, like push forward without, because I was not thinking that this is a male dominated sector. How am I going to navigate it? So this was a personal problem. You know, for me, I had a vehicle, mm -hmm. I was in a nine to five job and I needed to solve a problem. And this is a problem that I saw affecting many people, you know, regardless of gender. So mm -hmm. I went forth to, you know, solve this problem without really thinking about the, the gender effect. However, in my journey, I have learned to loop in, you know, male supporters. So my co-founder, yes. Are male. I have two male co-founders. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, quite a good number of my team are also male. So we create a good balance that is able to push our solution forward. Mm -hmm. Going to the unemployment crisis that your company is playing a good part in it by solving it somehow. Um, what else, aside from the entrepreneurial sector, do you think now Kenya should be shifting, just you've just said, uh, from the employment sector all the way to the informal sector? Are the environment, would you say, conducive for especially people who are hired? Okay, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I strongly believe that there's a lot of opportunity beyond employment. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that uh, for us, we've tapped into the gig market. Yes. There are many um, people who are un unemployed out there, but mm -hmm. they have the skills and they will just need, you know, a empowerment, a little empowerment for them to tap into jobs that they could uh, already work in, work in mm -hmm. without really having to go into employment. So in our case, we're empowering gig drivers who are not employed by anybody. They are also not our employees, mm -hmm. but we give them access to tools and training to empower them and enable them to be successful as gig drivers. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the technological advancements of this era, we have seen President William Ruto um, championing for technological advancement and urging the youth to tap into that particular sector, which will create what it has done right now, jobs at the end of the day. Um, are the policies and frameworks that are in place right now favoring the entrepreneurial sector? Okay, the policies are in place. Um, I would say they need to, you know, like they, there needs to be an acceleration okay. in policy amendment and mm -hmm. policy reviews to enable, you know, especially the highly regulated sectors like financial and healthcare mm -hmm. to enable more entrepreneurs to, you know, accelerate their solutions and empower more people on the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And technological driven firms such as yours often face challenges. For example, cyber security. Have you ensured your technological uh, side of it all is okay when it comes to cyber security? which has been a problem in the past. Yes, I totally agree that these challenges are uh, faced, and particularly uh, face technological, technology-driven uh, companies. Yes. And being a startup, you're actually limited in terms of resources, in terms of talent. Like right now, you know, there's a, you know, there's a talent shift. Uh, many of our young people are moving, you know, to greener pastures in, you know, countries in the first world. Yes. We also have, you know, we're fighting for tech talent between, you know, startups and tech giants, uh, you know, like Microsoft, Google, who already established, uh, you know, their head offices here for Africa here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So some of these challenges actually make it a little bit constraining for startups to, you know, put all these uh, s s measures in place. However, mm -hmm. you know, as startups, we also know how to navigate these waters. So we figure out how to, you know, you know, protect the data of our users right from the scratch. We mm -hmm. figure out how to, you know, put in security measures. And maybe in addition to that, I would also like to mention that there are various programs, you okay. know, uh, that support startups in ensuring that these um, security measures are actually in place. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we participated in a Google uh, Black Founders Fund Africa, which is a program that is led by Google, that, you know, they actually gave us a lot of, you know, immense te technical support to enable mm -hmm. us have all these processes in place. Mm -hmm. And of course, you just talked about something which is key, 
brain uh, brain drain. We've seen most of our brilliant young young men and women who are brilliant going to this particular Silicon even Valley in, in the United States. How can we make our own firms such as yours attractive so that the youth can join at the end of the day? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. So I think what the, the youth are looking for really beyond um, you know financial reward mm -hmm. is actually a place where they feel valued, a place where their opinion is taken. And I think uh, the youth today thrive in, in startup environments where we're actually really open, we discuss, they, they, mm. they're part of the decision makers, their opinion matters. So I believe that as startups come up with, uh, as more startups emerge and create mm -hmm. these environments, we should be able to retain more talent. And then in addition to that, uh, startups also have to have ESOP, um, ESOP plans in place, that is the equity stock options. So allow the young people to own a stake in your company. Mm -hmm. It could be as small as, you know, 0.5%, but when somebody is part of your vision, then you don't get to lose them. Mm -hmm. And with the market evolving every day, there are challenges to that. How is your company ensuring um, some of your systems and technological advancement um, address those key challenges? Okay, so we keep abreast with technology. Okay. Yeah, like the, we're a startup, so it is important for us to stay ahead. Mm -hmm. We have seen the AI revolution, yes. you know, and it's really important as a startup. They say that if your business is not powered by AI at this age, you're going to be crushed by a business that is powered by AI. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that technology startups stay abreast with technology. You have to, you know, adopt and uh, be very agile and adopt the new technologies coming in mm -hmm. to keep your, your startup, you know, ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And of course, with that in mind, um, what are the key areas? your company and others in the sector and key stakeholders are focusing on especially right now okay so for us right now particularly mm -hmm. in the transport we are currently looking at uh, sustainable mobility okay. so this has been i think in as kenya is leading the transition towards sustainable mobility practices so you have mm -hmm. seen the drive with the evs yes. you know the two wheelers coming in um battery technology so for us this is something that is key for us we're currently powering um an ice, uh, an ice fleet, that means mm -hmm. the, the normal vehicles, but okay. we, part of our strategy for 2024 20, quarter one mm -hmm. is actually to roll out an uh, EV fleet. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the key areas that we're currently focusing um, to enable us to be part of the players that are diminishing the carbon footprints. Mm -hmm. And of course with that, given that the government also is championing for green economy, we've seen even electrical cars. Um, down the years, will we be seeing Ke Kenya hosting cars like Tesla in the coming days? I strongly believe so. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of, uh, th th there is talent in the country and I think yeah. we have seen already, um, as I said, that Kenya is actually leading, you know, in the transition for sustainable mobility. Mm -hmm. We have startups that are already, you know, doing um, uh, revolutionary battery switching. There we see, uh, that is for the two wheelers, motorbikes as well as uh, bikes. Mm -hmm. So what we, see, um, what we see in the future is that we're actually going to be able to tap into, um, you know, the existing resources we have. I believe over 80 percent renewable uh, sources of yes. energy so with the startups that are coming up i strongly see that we're going to be able to you know come up with our own evs that suit our market and not just rely on bringing evs from you know the other countries mm -hmm. with the government led by president william ruto you've, see, you've seen most of the policies and um regulatory regulations they have been putting in place is to um ensure the green economy as well as uh, create more jobs is realized back from the acs 2023 we even saw electrical cars uh, being marshaled across the country, especially here in the capital. Um, how has your company morphed to ensure that you change with those demands by the current regime? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for our company, as I mentioned uh, before, we're currently uh, focusing on uh, uh, rolling out EV fleets. Okay. So this is going to enable us to, you know, rent out these EVs to, to drivers, which means they're actually going to get, um, you know, there's potential for more earning when you're driving an EV. Mm -hmm. That's because the EVs have less maintenance costs and also, f um, well, they're not using fuel, so not really fuel efficient, but less cost in terms of their mobility. Okay. So with our focus on, on EV, we're looking at, um, you know, want to take advantage of the tax incentives that the government uh, of, the, of, of, the, of, the, of today has put in place, tax incentives to enable us uh, capitalize on, on, on the policies that are there now. Mm -hmm. Key stakeholders such as you, um, ha have you gone to, especially these institutions, have they addressed the issue of technological advancement and especially in the transport sector, given that we're entering into that particular era, is our curriculum addressing those um, issues and of course creating somebody to ensure that when they leave school at least they can come and work such a, 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 in, in your company? I, I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll because I have seen um, there are a number of startups that are already working with students directly okay. uh, in the EV space. 
where so it, it may not be significantly in, uh, include you know significantly inclusive of this in their curriculum however mm -hmm. there are steps being made towards making this uh, part of their curriculum and so particularly in the engineering sector we have a certain i think technical the technical university and amongst others who are already um you know um uh, incorporating um some of this engineering in their courses. Mm -hmm. right. In any sector, there are new emerging trends that you need to keep up with, um, aside from technology. What are these emerging trends you're trying to um, at least accommodate so that you can survive with the times? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest emerging trend right now is AI, mm -hmm. and it is important for every startup to utilize AI. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, uh, we have incorporated AI in different uh, ways. So one way that we're using AI currently is for preventive maintenance of our fleet of vehicles. So through the data that we're able to collect on the vehicle, when the driver's actually vehicle, driving the vehicles, we're able to pick certain aspects about the vehicle and is able to inform us about any maintenance issues that will be coming up. So that is one area in which we use AI. Mm -hmm. We also use um, AI in terms of driver screening and uh, behavior management so when drivers are coming on board we have a robust uh, screening process which we've integrated AI and uh, to also monitor their behavior while they're on the road mm -hmm. and of course with this sector you're in this position as the chief executive officer what have you done for other women in this sector in terms of mentoring yes um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm open actually to mentoring young women and I mm -hmm. work with uh, women across different uh, programs. Mm -hmm. So we have programs where we support, um, um, we support women who are participating in that program. So by giving them um, you know, the tools they need, uh, sharing with them the experiences that we've gone through, networking with them with uh, investors or people that they need to, you know, to, to be engaging with, could be partners, could mm -hmm. be you know, uh, financial partners. So this is what I've been doing for female uh, founders uh, in the, on the continent actually uh, but currently I think I would like to say that I'm actually opening up my you know as a personal uh, mentor mm -hmm. to women so women can actually reach out to me directly and ask me for mentorship that they need in whichever area mm -hmm. and of course given that you're running this particular company you're dealing with major companies like uber for example um, the challenges of maintenance cost how is that working yeah, so we're dealing with uh, big companies, mm -hmm. but uh, what I would say is that you'll be surprised that actually big companies need services from, you know, even the small players in the market. Okay. So it's not about how, you know, the size of your company, but it's about the value that you actually offer. Mm -hmm. So we've positioned ourselves as this key player in matching drivers with vehicles, which is a key um, requirement for the ride hailing platforms. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, one of the unicorn ride hailing platforms, when they raise money, they mentioned that the biggest challenge that they had uh, for, to enable them scale across the continent mm -hmm. is actually access to to vehicles for their drivers so it is the value that we offer that enables us to play in the in the market with big players mm -hmm. and of course with this particular company not so many Kenyans of course know you um, in terms of corporate social responsibility what are some of the sensitization programs you have undertaken okay so we we currently have a graduate uh, trainee program where we are taking in um, you know, graduates from universities who mm -hmm. have completed their studies to come and, you know, have their startup experience as well and, you know, hone their skills, have experience, the, the initial experience that they need. And then we're able to, uh, you know, uh, improve on what they already know and enable them. And eventually we look at absorbing them, but also just launching them into the rest of the market. Mm -hmm. And of course, given that you're winding up, you can tell us um, what are certain proposals? I know you touched a little bit earlier on, but what are these policy proposals you're proposing, especially key um, industry players like, such as yourself to the government, given that they are watching you right now, what are those key areas they should be focusing on so that they can make the environment conducive for operators such as yourself? Okay, I, uh, the, the key uh, proposal that I would have is basically around tax incentives uh -huh. for EVs. Um, because we're all interested in going into the EV market, but what we realize is that uh, the vehicles that we bring into the country, uh -huh. we are used to bringing, um, you know, used vehicles that are, you know, coming from other markets. Uh -huh. So the difference between those cars and the EVs is that there are no used EVs. So we have to bring in new EVs. Those EVs are not affordable for our market. Mm -hmm. So what we would really appreciate is if the, the tax incentives were significant enough to enable us to compete with the, with the used vehicles that we currently import. Thank you so much. That is Balkis Jepkoni, the CEO of Fleet Simplify, and we wish you all the best and thank you for making time for us this afternoon.